This is the only video you need to watch if you're looking to protect your loved ones in the future, if you're currently receiving survivor benefits from Social Security, or you're thinking about filing for those survivor benefits. If you're new to my channel, my name is Ed Weir. I'm a retired district manager from the Social Security Administration. I've helped uh, hundreds of thousands of people navigate the bureaucracy, and I've made uh, hundreds of videos. And today we're going to talk about survivor benefits, how to maximize those benefits, how to do it correctly. Because one thing the Social Security is not, the government is not, it's not forgiving. If you make the wrong decision that just might affect you for the rest of your life, tens of thousands of dollars. So watch this video through the entire video and uh, we'll make sure that uh, you do the right thing the first time and uh, you'll protect yourself and your loved ones. So today we're going to talk about how to qualify for survivor benefits, how much you will receive, working while collecting Social Security benefits, common mistakes a lot of people unfortunately make, including a lot of uh, so-called Social Security experts out there on YouTube and other social media sites. We're going to try to uh, correct some of the misinformation out there, and we're going to tell you exactly how to file and when to file and what type of documents and everything you need. And I'm also going to be doing a update video on this as the need arises. So when the Social Security Administration or Congress decides they want to change whatever policy or regulation when it comes to survivor benefits, I'll uh, update the video in this series. Um, based on your questions, there's always uh, one thing about the, uh, the government, there's always exceptions to the exceptions to the exceptions. The uh, uh, the policy for Social Security is over 20,000 pages, and so there's always an exception out there for pretty much everything. So based on your questions, I'll add a video to the end of this series over the, the next many months. And, and every year, I'm going to update this series to make sure it's the, uh, the most update and the most accurate and the most beneficial for you and your loved ones. All right, let's go ahead and get started. So how do you qualify for survivor benefits? Well, number one, the worker. So what we're going to do is this video, we're going to call the worker, essentially the, uh, the person you're filing benefits on. In Social Security Administration, we call it the, the number holder, NH. So the number holder you're actually filing benefits on. So that's going to be the worker. And the survivor is uh, the person actually is going to be receiving the benefits. So the first thing is the worker has to be insured because Social Security Administration is an insurance system, basically. That was uh, one of the, the, the names they were going to give the Social Security Administration back in 1935. Even if you look on your Medicare card, it says, uh, you know, Medicare health insurance, uh, uh, retirement survivors insurance is what it's called internally, SSDI, Social Security Disability Insurance. So this is all insurance which basically means you have to pay into it. And that is also the case for survivor benefits. The survivor doesn't necessarily have to pay into it. The worker does in order to collect benefits on that particular person's record. So that person has to have paid into the system for 40 quarters and you get four quarters per year. So this is 10 years. So as long as that person paid into Social Security for 10 years, then they are insured. One of the unfortunate things, and I've taken way too many claims, hundreds, probably thousands of thousands of claims. Uh, uh, one of the worst parts of working at Social Security Administration is anytime you see an accident uh, or some terrible shooting um, on the news, within a week or so, the survivor comes in and files for benefits. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's good that we can help them out, um, but uh, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's usually a, a, a bad situation, but... Uh, that's the job. So luckily there's an exception. The minimum you have to pay, so if somebody is 22 years old, as long as they paid into Social Security six quarters, so we're talking about a year and a half into Social Security, then their uh, survivors can get benefits. So I've unfortunately, again, too many of these. A young person, 28 years old, uh, dies in a car accident, Let's say he was the uh, uh, the breadwinner of the family, the father. He dies in a, too many of these situations, and has two small children. And even though that person has only paid a couple of three years, their surviving children are entitled to benefits. And we'll talk about the surviving child benefits here in a little bit. I hope you agree with me that this is a very good situation uh, taking care of uh, young families that uh, suffer, suffer a tragic loss. Um, and that's always kind of the example I get when, you know, rightly so people say, hey, I paid into Social Security or my husband or my brother paid into Social Security. 
their entire life and they passed away before they were able to collect social security, what happens to all that money? Well, now you can tell them, uh, you know, next time you see on TV, some young mother of two or a father passes away and the children get benefits until they're 18 years old. So you can tell them uh, kind of that's where it goes. It is an ins- social security is insurance, but it is social insurance, you know, social security, secure society. So there's my two cents on uh, um, the kind of the mission of social security. All right. So 10 years, or there are exceptions for very young people that uh, pass away. So even if you are a surviving divorced spouse, so I'm going to break this uh, video up a little bit and we'll talk about both at the, at the same time. So we're talking about surviving spouses, those that were actually married to the worker when that worker passed away. And we're also going to be talking about divorced spouse benefits that someone that was married to the worker, let's say 20 or 30 years ago, but they were married to them for 10 years. So as long as you were married to that person for 10 years, then you are eligible for benefits on that particular person's record. And later on in the video, I'm going to share a trick that some ex-spouses try to pull when they get a divorce and uh, Social Security doesn't buy it. So when can you actually start collecting survivor benefits? Normally 60 years old. So that's the earliest you can collect it at 60 years old. However, if you're disabled, called a DWIB, Disabled Widow's Benefits. So if you're disabled, then you can file from 50 years old up until you reach 60. So as long as you're disabled, then you'll have to go through the, uh, the entire disability process. And I've got another video on that. Um, on how to file for disability and uh, improve your chances considerably based on my experience taking hundreds of thousands of disability applications at Social Security Administration. I've got uh, quite a few tips, tricks, and secrets on that. You can also receive survivor benefits if you're taking care of the worker's child who is under the age of 16. This is called auxiliary or actually survivor child and care benefits. If the person is receiving, the workers are receiving retirement or disability, and that person is still around, then the, uh, the other parent who does not work can collect auxiliary child and care benefits. When the worker passes away, it just, they change the name to survivor child and care benefits, and the benefits also increase as a percentage. So if, uh, again, I, I want you to watch these videos, not only for you, but Think of someone in your orbit, someone that you know that says, oh, wait a second. I know someone that, uh, you know, their husband passed away, their wife passed away. She was the breadwinner. And uh, let me go ahead and share this video. So and they might share it with someone else and that person might find a lot of money and say, wow, I didn't know I could do that. I thought this, that or the other. So do the right thing and uh, share this video, like and subscribe and all that kind of good stuff. And that way it sends it out to anonymous people you never know and they might find some more money. So it's a beautiful thing. So if you have a child under the 16, under the age of 16, or that child was disabled, became disabled before the age of 22, this is called its disabled adult child, then you're also eligible as a child in care. So basically the spouse, uh, the surviving spouse has to, for all intents and purposes, has to stay home and take care of that 16, under 16 year old child or the disabled child. Therefore, they cannot work. Therefore, they can also get surviving child and care benefits. And obviously, the kids will get uh, benefits as well. And there's one super secret uh, benefit out there that uh, in, in my decades and uh, millions of people are helping out. I've, I've never had the situation. There's parents. So if you have a worker who passes away 40, 50 years old and that person was providing at least half support for their parent or parents, then the parents could receive benefits. I've never seen that application in my office. I ran the third busiest office in the country and I've never, never seen it. So if you know anybody uh, receiving that or, or is going to file based on this video, Please comment below and uh, and let me know. Okay, now here's the uh, the fun part, I guess. It's the, also the complicated part. So, how much will you receive as a surviving spouse? So let's throw this up here and let's go through the list. And 
the best way to find out is if you qualify for survivor benefits and you don't want to play around, with, okay, I'll calculation this and you know, you don't want to do the, the, the long division, then all you have to do is call Social Security. But uh, stick around, just you just skip through this part, um, get to the next part if you don't want all the, the, the calculations. But uh, let me go and throw those up there for those uh, that are interested in that mathematical stuff. All right, a surviving spouse who is at their full retirement age or older can get 100% of the benefit amount of what the worker was receiving. A surviving spouse age 60 to just before their full retirement age gets anywhere from 71.5% up to 99% of the basic amount. So you've got two different numbers for anybody receiving Social Security benefits. You've got the PIA and you've also got the MBA. And the, and the PIA is the primary insurance amount and the MBA is the, is the monthly benefit amount. So basically, if you wait until your full retirement age, let's say your full retirement age is 67 and it's $2,000, that's your PIA. But if you retire early, you know, however many months early, it's a reduction. Anytime you take benefits from Social Security, it's almost always a reduction unless you're receiving disability benefits. So it's reduced. So your MBA, your monthly benefit amount might be $1,600. So your full amount is 2000 and your actual how much you receive is your monthly benefit amount is the 1600. So when we're talking about these numbers here, we're talking 100% of what the person was receiving. A surviving spouse who is receiving uh, obviously disabled widow benefits from 50 to 59, you get 71.5%. Um, if you're caring for a child, you get uh, 75%. The child gets 75%. And there's, there's also what's called a family max. So if you're filing for benefits and there's also children on the record, there's a maximum amount of benefits that Social Security can pay out on any record, the worker's record, whether that person is still alive and receiving retirement or disability, or whether it's a surviving spouse or child claim. There's a maximum that you can, that Social Security Administration can pay out. And it's usually about, uh, about 150 to 180 percent of the primary insurance amount. And with all these calculations, what you do is again set up an appointment with Social Security and say, hey, I want to file for survivor benefits or survivor child benefits. And then you just go down there or you, you know, they call you up in your appointed time and they take the application and then they give you the numbers. And at that time, once you have the definitive numbers, again, so you don't have to do all the long division and, you know, carry the one and all that kind of good stuff, you just get the numbers directly from the horse's mouth, directly from Social Security. But as I say in all my videos, you don't have to file at that time. You can just use it for informational purposes only, as we used to say in the Marine Corps. You can take that information and say, oh, okay, my benefit is going to be $2,000. Uh, well, what if I wait another six months or whatever the case may be? Oh, it's going to be X amount of money. Oh, okay. Well, uh, okay. Well, thank you very much. Uh, I'll call you back. Um, and Social Security employees love to hear, okay, I'll think about it. They love that. They, you know, they're not like car salesmen and it's like they're going to lose the sale. Social Security employees love to hear that. So you're not doing them any disservice. Um, as long as you, you know, call them back and watch my video on protective filing, as long as you call them back, you have X amount of days, um, to kind of make the final determination of what you want to do. Usually they'll send you a letter. It's a closeout letter and it'll say, okay, you know, you took the claim. We took the claim for you. You have X amount of days or months to make the final decision to make sure you're your benefits start. So if you call in February and then you say, okay, thank you very much for the information. Let me think about it. And you call them back in March, April, or May. In May, you call them back and say, yeah, I, I thought about it. I thought long and hard. Let's go ahead and do it. And they'll say, oh, okay. Uh, they'll, they'll look at the letter they sent you with the time frame and everything. And as long as everything is good, they'll say, okay, all right, let's go ahead and start. Did, did you still want to start in February? Because we can start in February because that's when, you know, we talked. And you can say, oh, no, 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 let's go ahead and start next month or this month or whatever the case may be. So um, that's one strategy to get the definitive numbers. And that way you make the best plan for your particular situation. One of the unfortunate 
things about survivor benefits that a lot of people don't recognize or plan for is the fact that when you receive those benefits, your total income from the house is going to stop because your spouse died. And I've talked to too many people that budgeted X amount of money based on, okay, uh, the one spouse is receiving this much from social security and the other spouse is receiving this much. And together they can pay the mortgage and food and all that kind of stuff. And they figure when one spouse dies, both checks would still keep coming in and they won't. It's called dual entitlement. So basically how it works is if one spouse, let's say the worker is receiving $2,000 a month and the surviving spouse is receiving $1,000 a month. So for the total of the house, it's $3,000. Okay. So they're able to live and pay everything. And then the worker dies, the person receiving $2,000. And essentially that check stops, but part of the money is transferred over to the surviving spouse, but only $1,000 because the spouse, the surviving spouse still receives their own benefit, the thousand dollars, but they receive again, based on how old that particular person is, the deceased worker was receiving $2,000. Then the surviving spouse will receive $2,000, not above and beyond their own $2,000 total. So they will receive a thousand dollars from the deceased and a thousand dollars continue to get a thousand dollars from their own record. So now, the total income coming into the house is only $2,000. It's not the $3,000. And unfortunately, too many people don't understand that and don't plan accordingly. So there's another scenario that a lot of people get wrong. A lot of people miss. It's called the widow's cap. Basically what it is, if your spouse was receiving social security benefits, retirement benefits, but they took it early, Anytime you take benefits from social security, it's reduced again, except for disability benefits. So if that person filed for benefits at 62, their benefit amount was reduced around 30%. So they're only getting 70% of their benefits. And if you go ahead and file, that person passes away and you file for benefits, you're basically going to receive what that person was receiving. So that's basically how the entire system works is. Once that person passes away, you essentially get what they were receiving again, minus your own, right? So for the total of what they were receiving, it, it comes in the same check. So you don't know there's two checks or anything like that. It's called a dual entitlement where you get, it's just one check, but it's an, an addition, uh, both, both checks together. But if that person was reduced, you know, quite a bit, then Congress decided that, uh, um, surviving spouses perhaps need a little bit more because again, one of those checks stopped. So one of the things Congress did, I guess is, is good. It's be nice to get a little bit more, but, uh, they deter, they determined that, uh, um, they're going to give the surviving spouses a little bit more than just the 70% what that person was receiving. And that is the, the widow's cap, that limitation. And it goes up to 82.5%. And rather than receiving 70% of that person's full benefit amount, the PIA at full retirement age, the surviving spouse will receive 82.5%. And the trick here, what a lot of people miss, and there's people throughout the country, you just might know someone that is waiting to collect surviving spouse's benefits. So they collect on their own benefits, which you can do. So you can collect on a surviving spouse and then um, wait until your benefits amount increases to your full retirement age, or even collect delayed retirement credits and then switch from surviving spouse to your own or vice versa. But what a lot of people do, unfortunately, is they say, I'm not going to collect on, on my ex spouses, on my deceased spouse's record because I'm going to wait until it increases. And unfortunately, if that person took it early, then it's never going to increase um, any more than 82.5%, which is usually around when you turn 62 and a half. So if you know anybody that's, you know, 
getting to be 62 and a half and they've been waiting for a couple of years. You know, you can start benefits at 60, but they've been waiting for a couple of years. I'm just going to keep waiting until that benefit amount keeps increasing. It's not going to increase any more than 82.5%, which is about 62 and a half years old. So call that person tonight and say, hey, you should stop waiting. You should call Social Security and find out how much your ex-spouses or your survive usually it's ex-spouse because you don't know how much you know they, when they retired and everything um, how much was that person uh, receiving and social security will usually if you call the 800 number um, they won't be able to someone at the front window or, or the, the people answering the phone won't be able to answer a complicated question like that usually you'll have to set up an appointment and just do what i told you before you know say you want to go ahead and file, but then say, okay, well, I, I'm with those numbers, I don't want to file right now. I'll, I'll try again in a year. So that's the best way to strategize to make sure you maximize your benefits. And let me tell you a super tip, trick and secret that almost everybody gets wrong. Pretty much all the YouTubers and so-called social security experts out there and social media, they've, most of these people have taken a couple of day course. There's some organization that provides a couple of day online course and you take it and they give you a cute little certificate saying you're a social security expert. Again, uh, yeah, um, even social security employees, one of the problems with social security employees um, is you, you get that muscle memory. When they're trained, they learn all the calculations and all the details, but then after the years and years and years where they just put the stuff in the system, put all the information in the system, then the system just kicks it out and they forget what it's all based on and stuff. So unfortunately, even social security employees get this wrong when they're talking about it. And that is delayed retirement credits. Surviving spouses do, I repeat, do receive delayed retirement credits from the worker's record. So the, one of the problems is, is the, uh, the misunderstanding I think derives from the fact that current spouses do not. So if you're a spouse and you want to collect from the worker because that person's benefit amount is higher and that person has not collected until they're 70 years old, they have a they have a lot of delayed retirement credit. So they might, you know, be receiving you know, their benefit amount might be, you know, $4,000 or something um, because they get all those delayed retirement credits. So you're saying, cool, I get up to 50% of that. I'm going to get $2,000. Right. And then when that person passes away, you know, I'm going to get the four thousand dollars. Well, you're right halfway. When that person is alive, you do not get the delayed retirement credits. When that person passes away, you do, in fact, get the delayed retirement credits. So you're only going to get. So if that person's benefit amount was, you know, full benefit amount was two thousand, you're going to get a thousand dollars. That person's getting four thousand dollars, but you're only going to get a thousand dollars. When that person passes away, then you'll get the four thousand dollars again as long as you are your full retirement age. Okay. So a lot of people get that, uh, that wrong. No, but you won't because you watch this video. One more money calculation is the infamous lump sum death payment that, uh, uh, the $255 it's been $255 since the 1950s. And it's just sad. I've given out hundreds and hundreds of thousands of those. And you know, nobody's ever been woohoo, $255 when a burial, you know, and uh, medical costs when the person deceased and everything and you know debt or whatever the case may be you know tens of thousands twenty thousand um, dollars 255 dollars doesn't put a dent on it um, so one of the things i've done is i put together a team of throughout the united states so if you're looking for uh, burial insurance life insurance to supplement survivor benefits uh, the inevitability that we will need that because again, social security is in, in insurance, but to depend on social security insurance alone is, uh, is not going to do it. So just click on the, uh, the link below in the description and, uh, tell us what you need and we'll put you, uh, in touch with someone that will be able to give you some good quotes on burial insurance and life insurance and obviously Medicare and all that things. So, uh, we vetted all these people and we want to make sure people get the correct information because, I spent decades and uh, I'm tired of people uh, um, getting the runaround and getting incorrect information and not getting um, the benefits they ultimately deserve. All right, let's talk about working while receiving survivor benefits. So this is also applicable 
if you are receiving pretty much any type of benefits, whether you're receiving spousal benefits or you're receiving benefits on your own record, the retirement. Um, disability is completely different, but this is uh, for retirement and survivor and uh, spousal benefits. So this is working. Yes, you can work. Um, once you hit your full retirement age, you can make a million dollars a month. It doesn't matter anymore. And if you do, you know, make sure you click in the description and you know, buy me a beer or coffee or something. I appreciate it. Um, but you can work if you're under your full retirement age. So if you collect uh, uh, survivor benefits at 60 up until your full retirement age, you're limited. So this year in 2024, it's $22,320. So basically anything over that. So if you make $10,000 over that, you owe the Social Security Administration $5,000. And how do you take care of that? Well, you can just, you know, not notify them and get paid over the $5,000 over. And next year, once your employer notifies the IRS and the IRS notifies Social Security and Social Security will send you a nasty gram and nice little letter that says, uh, hey, pay us this $5,000 now or, you know, um, and if you got the money, just go ahead and pay it or you can set up a payment plan. But the best way to do it is just call Social Security and say, hey, I'm going to be going over that amount and suspend your benefits. And I have a video that explains working while receiving benefits in more detail. Um, so make sure you watch that. The year you turn your full retirement age, the annual earnings limit changes. So it's $59,520. So $59,520. So if you turn your forward, let's say your full retirement age is 67 and you turn 67 in July. So basically from January until June, you can make $59,520 because starting in July, you can make a million bucks a month and it doesn't matter anymore. So it's only that last year. So if you make any money over that amount, those first six months, then Social Security withholds $1 for every $3 you go over. And again, how do they know? They know the following year when the IRS notifies them about how much you made the previous year. So if you want to be preemptive, it's good to go ahead and give them a call. So this is the end of part one. So make sure you uh, move on to part two, where we're going to talk about a lot of the misconceptions, misunderstandings, uh, I'm going to answer some of the frequently asked questions. And then I'm going to tell you exactly how to file for Social Security benefits and save yourself some money and aggravation and uh, all the rest of it. So make sure you stay for that one. And as always, make sure you subscribe and share this video with uh, your loved ones and anybody in your community that just might need it.